people on stage with you. And it's like, no, this time it is your sole responsibility to entertain the masses. And you're just like, shit. <laughs> Hi, Tyler. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for, for doing this. Of course. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Um, I'm Adam, and this is about you and your journey in music. And uh, we'll talk about Texas Hold'em and everything else you have uh, coming up. Perfect. Amazing. Um, first off, where were you born and raised in Georgia? Is that what I read? Or Yep, born and raised in Georgia. Okay, and you're still there now? Yes. Or are you in Nashville? Oh, okay. Yeah, I go back and forth because it's only a three-hour drive, so it's really not that bad. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm <laughs> south of Nashville now in uh, like Williamson County, Franklin area. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. My so cousin, my cousin used to live in Franklin. Oh, cool. Very, very <laughs> cool. Um. So Power Springs is that where originally you're from? Yep, Powder Springs. I was born in um the Kennesaw Marietta, Marietta area, and then um, which is only like fifteen twenty. 30 minutes from here and then we moved to Hiram okay what was that like I mean I mean I my dad did it but um I love it here because I mean we're just far enough out in the country where you know nothing really it's kind of quiet and peaceful but then if we want to go to the mall or we want to go do something fun it's only a short drive away that's good nice mm -hmm. perfect little balance there sounds like I love it um, and obviously you do come from a, quite a musical family. Dad's yeah. a very accomplished <laughs> musician. And then I, I also saw that your brother is like some prodigy violinist. Is that true? No. <laughs> oh. What? A, where he, was I reading this? He, uh, I have one brother play, my middle brother plays uh, guitar very, very well. And he sings. Yeah. He, um, he has like the rocker vibe. And then my other, my youngest brother, plays the drums and the guitar and they think he sings but we're not sure yet <laughs> no way so i found this whole thing about how your brother was like a like some prodigy violin player <laughs> i don't know I, i'm gonna tell him because he's gonna yeah. be like what what no i gotta find the thing i was just like oh wow that's wild um <laughs> how funny oh the internet it's burned me before i'm not gonna lie um <laughs> so i guess that's why i asked uh, yeah so you do, yeah, obviously a music, music, music household. Um, so at what age do you start playing? Like, was it something that your dad like encouraged in the house? Does your mom play? No. <laughs> okay. My mom, um, which she knows it and she'd say it. My mom is tone deaf. Like she's, she can dance very, very oh, well. That's um, nice. She cannot sing. Uh, but yeah, no, we started, I mean, I started singing when I was like three years old. Wow. And then, yeah, but I didn't start doing it professionally until I was about 14, 14, 15. Okay. So you started, what about like an instrument where you put on in like piano lessons or anything like that? Piano, I started taking piano when I was six or seven, six oh, or wow. seven. Okay. I, guitar did not come to me like it came to my brothers. I've tried and tried and it is like. It's not, it's just not, doesn't compute <laughs> math, not mathing. And yeah, so Tristan and Terry and we're like, oh, that's fine. We'll, we'll be the guitar players. You know, we got this. I was like, have at it by all means. That's cool. Did you guys jam together or do you jam together? Um, me and my brother actually, um, or my middle brother, my youngest brother, he uh, usually is on tour with my dad, but me and my middle brother, we went on a tour one tour and it was called the sibling rivalry tour and after <laughs> that he called all of our management and he was like yeah we're not the osmonds we're not get, we're not doing this and <laughs> I was like i was having a good time he goes no he goes don't get me wrong he goes you and your band are so much fun to travel with and so much fun to tour with he goes but i just he goes this is not going to become a brother sister thing i was like that's fine. <laughs> He's like, let me nip this in the bud now. <laughs> nip it in the bud right then and there. I was like, all right, that's fine. That's so are you, you're the oldest and then you have two younger brothers? Sounds yeah, like, no. okay. And your youngest brother, you said tours with your dad? 
Yes, he um he runs merch for him. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Do you remember like as a kid or or you know being very young and like either seeing your dad on tour or going with him on tour or you know oh, yeah. going to the studio with him or anything like that? Do you have any fond memories? He wouldn't let us go to the studio, but he <laughs> um we would definitely we'd go on the road with him a bunch and then He'd bring us out on stage when we were little and we'd sing God Bless America, which was. Oh, that's super- awesome. Yeah, that was always fun. And um, yeah, we kind of were always with dad, like traveling, doing fun stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, seeing that at, uh, for your entire life, was that did you know that you wanted to perform or kind of follow in your dad's footsteps in, in, in a way when it came to your yeah. kind of career path? You knew that early on? Oh, I definitely did. I remember seeing him young and I was like, ooh, that's what I want to do. I was like, you get to do that every single night? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, and that's your job? Like, you just get to go up on stage and sing and have fun and like party every night? I'm like, that <laughs> sounds amazing. And I it obviously helped that I just absolutely fell in love with country music. Like, I already knew what genre, like, I, and of course, I listen to other things. Like, my playlist is all kind, like, all over the place. Because one uh-huh. minute it'll be free, the next minute it'll be shaggy, the next minute it'll be Guns and Roses. Like, it's it's literally all over the place. But there was something about country that I was always like, yes, like, this is just, this is it. This is what you want to do? Yeah, this is what I want to do. And they tried. Like, they were like, are you sure? Like, especially my dad. He was like, are you sure you don't want to do anything else? Be anything else? So I was like, no. This is what I want to do. This is what I want to be. (laughs) Right. That's awesome. Because I remember I've I've interviewed other artists, like, that have famous parents or or musician parents that most of them were saying, like, yeah, like, they would be supportive, obviously, but in in a way of being, like, are you sure you really want it was almost like they kind of wanted to steer him away from that just because it's such a difficult you know my dad definitely did once he realized that I was not giving that up like I was not gonna listen he finally was like all right well then let me help you (laughs) that's cool I'm like all right that's that's fair that's fair enough so did you like uh you were in vocal lessons and those type of things growing up couple lessons for a couple years um I'm actually wanting to look to get back into it just because you know you can never right I mean even the the biggest of the biggest artists still have vocal exactly exactly and um and I found that just every time I you know when I was doing vocal lessons like I was there's new things that I want to try new things that I want to do so yeah I definitely want to get back into that um but yeah and you said uh, you started to do this as a like, profession at, at 14. Uh, was mm-hmm. that when you recorded the song? You did like a duet with your dad, right? Yep. And was that like your first experience, like being in a studio and, and recording a song? Oh, yeah. It was my first and I swore to God I thought it was going to be my last. I Really? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Because I didn't. I'm. I mean, they had warned me about the studio, but that was the first time going in and actually hearing my, like my voice in real time. Like I did not like in your headphones and everything. Yeah. I did not understand what was going to happen. I didn't know that when I was going to go in to sing that I was going to be hearing myself being played back in my ears in real time. So that threw me off and that was a lot for me to adjust. And then, um, there was just like one part of the song that my dad kept wanting me to sing over and over and over again and I was like dad and even the producer was like hey we can just tweak whatever you're wanting her to do she's almost there like we can just tweak it just a little bit or like I can just hit this one button and dad's like I'm not pro tools you're not gonna be pro tool but I'm so I'm like uh so mom goes at one point you're sitting there and she goes you're looking at me and she goes your big old eyes she goes you're just tearing up and I'm just looking like I want to go home and dad made me reimburse him and work and pay for all the time that he said I wasted in the studio because I was supposed to practice beforehand and I did not. Oh, wow. I mean, so he, that was the he lesson. wanted to teach you a lesson, right? Oh, and he did. And now it's the funniest thing. Cause I'll go into the studio to record a song and I am so quick now, like in and out. And everyone's like, 
oh my god you're so fast and i'm like it's because it's the trauma it's the right. trauma I'm yeah like, well it's like he wanted you to be prepared and now you go in there and you know you're ready for like game time right it's not oh, like yeah. okay let's go ahead and you know see if i can do this and oh 1000 percent because he's oh, like you're not wow time because you're not gonna waste because he goes time is money and really he was showing me time is for real money because he was like you're not wasting my time you're not wasting the sound engineer's time you're not wait he's like uh-uh he goes because that's more money and i stayed in that studio till i think it was like 11 something that night and then of course i went home that next day and i practiced practice 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 and then we went in the studio the next time i knocked it out and it was fine but i was like that whole experience i was like if this is what recording a song is like every time you're like i'm I, done i can't do it i was like i'd, I'd die but no <laughs> <laughs> thank god that was the only bad experience everything else has been really really awesome and fun since then. that's cool though i i love that he did that when he's like no we're and i love that he said no we're not doing pro tools because he's okay. grown in the age of like i'm just gonna like recording to tape and and all of that where it's if you screw up it's You're done. costly yeah. right you got to go back and get more real and it's like a whole thing where now oh, yeah. if you can just delete it and like the producer was saying oh i could just you know push a button and fix it here in pro yeah. tools it one tiny little part and dad my dad is truly like a simon cowl like he does not <laughs> care I'm a kid he is gonna he's gonna tell me like it is which i appreciate but yeah no i was like he, the, he was like it's just this one little part all i gotta do is just hit this one little button dad was like no do it again do it again and i was just like i'm gonna kill you like this is ridiculous <laughs> I'm over this but, but he's no. training you. Yeah, that's awesome. Instead of just being like, okay, you like you sing the whole thing and then he stays at the studio later and he's like, all right, we need to, you know, we need to fix this. And he just makes it sound all perfect and then he just gives it back to you. And you're like, oh, wow. Like he's teaching you, hey, this is what you sound like and this is where I know you can get. Let's, yep. let's get to that level. Wow. No, exactly what he did. And I, I definitely appreciate it because it's, it's helped me because ever since then they've been like, why are you so fast? How do you do that? So and I'm like, my father. My like, let me father. tell you something. <laughs> when I was 14, it cost me a hundred this much money to record one song. <laughs> Sanity, but we're good. <laughs> uh, what was the second experience then like? What was the next song you recorded? And how old were you? Were you like, okay, I have oh, a little God. PTSD about going back in here and doing this, but I went in with um so I used to work with Dave all day for a little bit and we went in and um, that was when I really got into the, um, cause we would, rec I wasn't used to when we would do a co-write, usually you just do like a little voice demo or something into your phone. Well, when you write with Dave, he has all the, you know, he has a studio. Yeah. He has a studio. So he has all the bells and whistles and you can record it like right then and there. So, that was probably when I really got into the hang of like, all right, we'd write, then we'd go in and record and I'd used to, I'd just slap on the headphones and just, we, you know, block things out or sing this line. And that's was when I really got comfortable in the swing of things. And then when we went to go in to record these last two songs, porch light and Texas hold them, everybody was like, cause it was truly like we went in, it was like, boom, boom. All right, done. Done. I don't even think we were there maybe an hour for both songs. No and, way. Yeah. And they were like, wait, what? And I was like, it is between dad and Dave all day. And just like that. I don't know. That's just what it was. That's cool. That's crazy. So when you are going through like, like, like what age do you start writing songs or are you doing these co-writes? Is that later? Uh, then, I, I mean, 14, I, you record a song, and then after that, is it? Because I know you guys did a cover, but so after that, was it where you start write, songwriting? Like, when did that kind of come into your life? I was kind of writing. I was writing before I started doing co-writes. Now, by any means, none of them were good. It was just, <laughs> you know, little attempts. And then I think I did my first co-write when I was about 18, okay. I want to say. And then, yeah, I just, I go back and forth. I do both, you know, I'll write some of my own co-write and yeah, I love it. It's fun. Were you like, when you wrote your first earlier songs, would you like bring them and show your dad? 
Or no, were you buried too? I would, uh, I wouldn't, I didn't sing in front of my dad until I was much, much older. Um, just because I was so scared about what he would say. So whenever I, you know, come up with a new song or like anything like that, I would go sing it for my mom or my Nana because they'd be like, Oh my God, you sound am-. like, I sounded like Beyonce to them because they right. don't I don't know the difference and you're like i want to get this positive re- yeah. reinforcement here <laughs> anything i play them or show them they're like oh my god that's the best thing i've ever heard i'm like yes this is amazing <laughs> so yeah you go to dad and he'd be like that was flat that was sharp that was pitchy as hell and i'd be like okay thank you <laughs> but it, uh. it made it better i did i i love that because now like which comes to a fault like I'm a perfectionist like I want to do if I hear something or something's not exactly right or like because I'm also a little OCD too I'm like nope we gotta do it again we gotta get it told it's gotta be perfect it's gotta be perfect well that's I mean a, a good uh trait to have I would imagine especially when it comes to recording sometimes like, and, you know, yeah music <laughs> yeah <laughs> when did you start performing like was that something you were doing in, when you were in high school and stuff or, like would you go play locally or do like a little coffee shop shows or no oh yeah yeah i'd play locally well i had always been on stage and performing because i did dance competitions so okay. i was all i had been on stage performing since i was four or five years old and wow. then but dancing on stage and singing on stage are like two completely different things so when i switched over to singing it was like, oh, like it. I didn't think it'd be that night and day difference because I'm like, you're just performing in front of an audience. But it's, I don't know. It's weird. It's different to describe. It's like a whole different kind of mindset. I figured they'd be this. It'd be very similar, but it was not. Right. And then you have the mic, right? You got to kind of entertain. Oh, yeah. Oh, the first time I went up there, I was so nervous. I couldn't even. I was like, what am I supposed to do? And then I was like, I was standing in one spot. Like, oh, the first few videos of me out doing shows and stuff they're probably like what is this girl doing because I was like I don't know what to do with my hands like I'm just I'm just standing here like yeah I mean it's definitely something you have to practice and work on until you can get like the comfortable comfortable I mean yeah you said you're comfortable on a stage but it's like now you're the center of attention like okay yeah you gotta speak you gotta that's what it was because you normally you have a group but you know you have people on stage with you and it's like no this time it is your sole responsibility to entertain the masses and you're just like shit (laughs) (laughs) that's awesome no (laughs) um you was perfect the next song that you recorded like was that the next time you had a chance to go to a studio and do a song yep okay and how many years after was that uh from because that was like from just I'm going off of your Spotify like oh uh, 17 2017 yeah I was like 16 17 when okay we were... when you did yeah. that okay mm-hmm. so that was a few years after the the cover that you did with your dad yeah yes was it yeah yes okay. it was, it was. Okay. yeah because yeah dad's the duet was 14 and then yeah perfect yeah. Years so was later. that going was that like really the second time you're like okay let's do this and at like at this point it's your song was it yeah. a lot different going in not yep. yeah singing your own thing versus like a song that had already been recorded at one point yeah that and that was that was weird because you know at least the first time I had like something to go off of you know I had something to listen to so this was like my song and I was like all right you know this is gonna this is going to be like the real deal this time. So mm-hmm. that was definitely a cool experience. Meanwhile, I hear that song now and I'm like, I sound like such a baby. Like, well, it's, it's so- like, you know, six, that. five, six years ago now. Yeah. Six years ago. Like, yeah. Uh, so. um, And then recently you did Porch Light and then obviously Texas Hold'em. So in mm-hmm. the interim between those two songs, there's six years there. So was it just working on your your craft or were you touring or like like in the in between those it took a, a minute to to put out another song was it just were you just working on your sound yeah. or like what was the reason behind that figuring out you know figuring out me what kind of entertainer i am what kind of music i wanted to do because you know i was young and at the time 
everyone I was listening to, I was trying to emulate and sound like, and dad was like, it's, you know, it's great to have people to look up to. Um, but you don't want to, he goes, I, you know, cause dad goes, I listen to Waylon Jennings. I listen to Charlie Daniels. I try to take little bits and pieces from everyone and just, you know, learn that way. But I don't try to sound exactly like them. I was young. So whatever I hear, I would try to sound exactly like that person singing. Right. So, I mean, not, not even because you're young. I think a lot of people, it's just like an ins. you just gonna yeah. like all you know is what their person's doing right or or you're trying to be like oh well i like that person so i'm gonna try to sing like that exactly. it's hard to find your own voice no. I, I think that's got to be the hardest thing is to be it yourself really <laughs> that's what i was thinking, like going out and like trying to figure out what my audience audience likes what my audience doesn't like um you know it's just trying to find the balance getting more songs you know just trying to get everything and then getting the whole business side of everything taken care of. It's, it was a, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. Yeah, for sure. And so porch light, you finally were like, okay, this is it. I this is, I know this is the song that I want kind of my date, not debut because you had other music out, but like, this is what well, I no, it was. Put it was definitely a debut. Cause we had perfect, but I was like, you know, this was my, the way I looked at porch light was this was my, official like debut like introduction of like a new artist kind of thing like mm -hmm. hey here's a here's a new upcoming artist and i okay. heard fight in texas hold them and i was like "Ooh, these are perfect these are I didn't write, yeah jada dryer wrote those so okay and were you in the process with them when they were writing it i or was no not it was just like here's yeah. a pitch song and you're like okay this is it oh she pitched me yeah she pitched me like a file and i was like all amazing songs and i i heard texas hold them and i heard porch light and i was like ooh, i was like these two are it like yeah just... like what what resonated with you with those songs was it the lyrics or just everything the melodies of the songs porch light was definitely i loved the attitude and i loved the sass of that song because i was like yeah that's definitely my kind of personality mm -hmm. and then um texas hold them like she had sent it to me, of course, right when I was going through whatever I was going through with one of my exes at the time. And I was actually, I'd just come back from visiting him in Texas mm. and he had sent me this song. And I just remember listening to the lyrics and every lyric, it, it sounded like something I could have wrote. And I was just like, this is crazy. Cause it was literally describing everything that I was feeling, thinking. And I was like, oh, well, that's a, that's not a coincidence so i right. was, you know, messaged her back immediately i was like these two songs i want these two songs <laughs> do not let anybody else have them and um yeah it was history from there and yeah i, I love those songs no they're yeah they're really good i was because i'm sure when you're getting songs pitched to you or you know uh, as an artist having to sing the songs and, and make them yours right you'd have to like believe i would imagine when you're going through it you're like okay like is this something that i could sing and be passionate about and like make it authentic is that i mean is that really part of digging through songs like it sounds like you got a file of songs so oh, more than one yeah. if i like, personally if i can't relate or resonate with the song like it's it's not it'll come across fake if I try to sing it like if I'm not feeling it or I can't relate it to me in some kind of way it's not gonna I've noticed because I've tried to do that and it doesn't come across to the audience as well like all the songs I do in my set any song that I record it has to resonate with me or relate like in some way shape form or fashion as it, like it has to be as if I could have wrote it right right I would imagine that yeah you because yeah. being authentic and having it sound like having the passion behind it and the emotion behind it, it's got to play a big role in it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, with I love the video for Porch Light. You had uh, Rob Mays in the video, right? Is he That's in it? Boy. Yeah, I've had him on my show before. So Aww. I saw that. I was like, I think I know that guy. And then I yeah. <laughs> like watched it. I'm like, oh, I do. Oh, that's <laughs> fun, but yeah, that's cool. Fun. So tell me about that video. Was that a concept that you had come up with or somebody was pitched the idea to you? No, um, it was pitched to me um, by the director. I was actually in Montana 
and she sent me the script and like the layout of what was going to happen. And I just remember sitting at the airport reading it and I was like, I could not wait to get back home and to start shooting because all I saw was like, and then she smashes a mirror here and she walks down the hallway and breaks. I was like, I get to break stuff. I'm like, this is so awesome. This is so exciting. So <laughs> the, the day of filming, we definitely had a bunch of fun. A That's bunch cool. Of fun. That is so cool. And do you have a video? I don't think you have a, do you have a video for Texas Hold'em? I've seen a bunch no. of live performances for it. Yeah, that that will be coming up. <laughs> ah, okay. So when you and we have some dates coming up as well. Um, yeah. with with uh, your set and your in your live shows, you you have three out, right? I mean, you said the other one is perfect. Isn't really something you mess around with, as far as like you said that's mm. not really your debut was porch light. Yeah. So do you, are there other songs you put into your set that we haven't heard yet that are going to be coming out later and. Like how do, like when yeah when we when somebody sees you on tour because you're doing a handful of shows coming up um, yeah when they come out on tour I, I do like a mixture of both you know I have obviously I do Porch Light Texas Hold'em um but yeah we do other songs that um we've wrote and we do of course all kinds of because I I love the '90s country so we do. Mm -hmm you know, my nineties country Queens and their covers and, um, yeah, but we do a whole bunch of, whole bunch of new music that nobody's, nobody's heard yet. <laughs> wow. And then are some, some of those recorded? Like, do you have uh, more music coming out soon? Oh, yep. We sure do. Yeah. I'm actually going into the studio before this year is up. You're gonna knock them out round two. <laughs> That's exciting. Very exciting. And then your tour starts next month, right? Like you're doing Actually, like a week or so? No, this weekend is the first one. They just added oh my. this. The, oh, like, wow. Uh, yeah, they just added this one, like I think last week. So um, I'm in Augusta, Georgia on Saturday, I believe. And then, yeah, that starts. I think I have a show every weekend this month. I'm just like wow. this whole month. Yeah, I I keep forgetting today's not only is a Halloween, but it's like next month is. <laughs> oh my god! Tomorrow is November, so I'm looking. I'm like, oh yeah, you got some shows and coming up next month, but that's literally tomorrow. <laughs> Are you doing anything for Halloween? <laughs> we did weekend. I'm actually driving to Nashville tonight for the rights tomorrow. I'm gonna be riding all weekend and before I and then drive back Friday before the show and then. Oh, yeah. cool. You said you did Halloween this weekend? Mm-hmm. You dressed yeah, up? We, oh, yeah. I was okay. uh, Laura Croft from... Oh, Tomb from uh, Tomb Raider. Yep. And then uh, my brother and his girlfriend were the Peaky Blinders, but then he's dumb. He can never do, like, just a normal costume, so he bought pig accessories, like the nose, the ears, the tail, and he called himself the Porky Blinders. Uh <laughs> I don't even, I don't understand where he gets this stuff, but, um, yeah, we went to the battery and hung out one night. And then the second night we went to six flags and did fright fest and rode some roller coasters, which was fun. And then Sunday night we went to Netherworld, which that scared the crap out of me. Oh, is that like a haunted house? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, they, that's apparently it's one of the best in the country which i mean i believe it i about peed my pants multiple times <laughs> <laughs> but it was about me but we went with a group of 10 people and when they jump out and scare normally they'd go back in their little hidey hole not with me no me oh, they fam. follow you no. around oh they follow <laughs> me i did not under i was like why me i'm like there are people look we have a whole group of people i'm like why are y'all latching on to me and they're like tyler it's because you're screaming and hiding the most and I'm like I got my head down like this I'm like trying to I'm like just block me in and there, no no one was listening and I'd turn around thinking the monster was gone and they're right behind me I'm like yeah no oh wow yeah they know they're like okay this person's scared I'm gonna just go mess with them then yeah time. I was like y'all ain't even trying anybody else in the group quick picking <laughs> on Oh, uh, that's funny. Well, uh, great uh, good luck on the, the tour coming up and enjoy yeah. Nashville this weekend and um i love what the, the the couple you have out thus far and uh, i'm excited for the video for texas Holden you said that you have coming out as well 
And uh, I appreciate your time today, Tyler. Thank you so much for doing this. Of course. Thanks for having me. I have one more uh, question before I let you go. Yes. I want to know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Just figure out who you are. Figure out what works for you. Figure out your audience. Find yourself. Find your voice. And don't let anybody, anybody tell you you can't do something or try to stop you. In fact, let that be your fuel. Let that be your motivation. Prove them wrong. And yeah, just go for it. Bring me the best word.